welcome back. So, our next topic is inflation. So, basically inflation is due to many reasons. One of the reason of inflation is increase in money supply, we already discussed and how to curb money supply is the role of Reserve Bank of India. One major reason, one other reason can be increase in demand. So, this increase in demand, it can be because of money supply or it can be because of some other factors like population and all these factors are there. Then decrease in supply is also one of the reason of inflation. <coughs> So, these are the three major reasons of inflation, but inflation in layman terms, first we will understand what is inflation, basically how inflation starts, what is the impact of inflation on the general society and then we will discuss the different different types of inflation. So, inflation in simple words, it is nothing but mehengai. So, mehengai means suppose <coughs> earlier in 50 rupees, you were able to buy this pen, one pen, but now suppose in 2000, this is 2015 and in 2016, you have to spend 55 rupees to buy this same pen. It means the price of this pen has increased by 5 rupees or we can say there is an inflation in the economy of 10 percent. This is what inflation means. So, these are the small, small definitions given by different, different economists. First one is, but we do not only consume pen, we consume lakhs and lakhs of commodities. We consume this pen, we consume this duster, we consume this pen, this system, these lights, fan, AC, we consume n number of things. So, whatever is the average increase of the prices of all these commodities, that is known as inflation. So, one definition can be, it is the average rate that prices are rising. Whatever n number of commodities that we consume their average rate, increase in their average prices is known as inflation. One more definition given by Johnson is, it is a persistent increase in general level of prices. It means, what are the general level of prices that we have, the persistent increase. For example, last year it was 50, now 55, then the next year it becomes 57, very next year it becomes 62. So, this persistent increase in general prices, general level of prices of commodities and services both, that is known as inflation and the Colbun also gave one definition that when too much money is chasing too few goods, this too much money is chasing too few goods means, suppose we have only one pen, next year also we have the same pen, but the money has increased, too much money, 50 to 55. The money has increased, when too much of money is chasing, too few of goods, then it is known as inflation. So, all these are the different different definitions of inflation that we have. After that definitions, what is the impact of inflation? The prices increase, of course, the price of pen increased from 50 to 55 and it decreases the purchasing power. How it is decreasing the purchasing power? Because whoever was having this 50 rupees and he was able to buy this one pen, but now this person has to spend 55 rupees to buy the same pen and th this A do not have 55 rupees in case. So, in case of this thing, the purchasing power has decreased because the actual value of the money the purchasing power of the money, it means the amount of money which is required to buy one some, some commodity, it has decreased. So, because of inflation, the prices increase, price becomes 50 to 55, the purchasing power decreased, it means the purchasing power of the money decreased as well as the purchasing power of the society also it decreases. Then next one is, inflation is a type of tax. It is a kind of tax only because earlier you were, uh, you have to spend 55 rupees, but now you, earlier you were supposed to pay 50 rupees to buy this pen, but now you have to spend 55 rupees. So, we can say there is a kind of tax. It is not exactly tax, whatever is mentioned it is in double quotes. It means we, have, we just want to use that particular concept here. 
that does not means the actual sense of tax here it only means that it is very much similar to tax and it hits the poor most then we have because of inflation one of the cause of one of the consequence of inflation is there is no price stability suppose today the price of this pen is 50 rupees next week it becomes 55 very next week it becomes 65 then it becomes 72 then it becomes 80 it means there is no stability of the prices so inflation causes or removes or decreases the price stability this thing happened in case of Zimbabwe in Zimbabwe in early 2000s first decade every 24 hours every 24 hours the prices of the commodities they were become double it means if this time today I am able to purchase this pen in 50 rupees tomorrow it will be available in 100 rupees day after tomorrow it will be available in 200 rupees there was no price stability in Zimbabwe in the first decade of 21st century and the reason was because the government increased the money supply too much <coughs> in case of Zimbabwe the situation was like in lakhs and lakhs of Zimbabwean currency you were able to purchase just one packet of bread there was La the, in the value of inflation was in lakhs and lakhs since so the same similar event happened in case of 1920s after the treaty of Versailles after first world war in Germany the inflation was very high all of us know that Germany belongs to temperate area and temperate in temperate areas about 45 degrees north in temperate areas the cold or the, the temperature in wind during winter is very high sorry is very low the temperature may reach to minus 20 degrees Celsius and it reaches sometimes to 25 to 30 degrees Celsius during summer <coughs> so it's so chilling temperature <coughs> German citizens they used to burn coal but to purchase coal you have to shell out currency the situation was so grim that rather than purchasing coal from this currency and burning the value of currency was so cheap that people prefers to burn currency rather than purchasing coal from it and then burning the coal that was the value that was the worth of the currency of Germany after first world war or just before when the Hitler came then we have the inflation eats inflation eats both these things the savings how inflation eats savings is suppose you are deposit you have deposited your funds with some bank and you gave 100 rupees to this bank <coughs> but suppose there is inflation of 10% it means suppose you gave in 2014 in 2015 2016 and 2017 you are supposed to get this 100 rupees a 10 percent interest rate annually so it means in 2017 ideally you should get more than 140 rupees but the problem is because there is if the fd rate is 10 percent annually but suppose there is an inflation of 5 percent annually so it means 100 rupees in 2015 will become 105 the purchasing power of 105 in 2015 is same as 100 rupees in 2014 earlier you were able to buy 2 kg sugar in 100 rupees now you have to shell out 105 rupees to buy same 2 kg sugar the very next year it is going to become 110 and this year it is going to become 115 so it means on paper theoretically you got 10 percent interest rate annually because you are getting more than 140 rupees but now 15 rupees equivalent inflation has been affected it means actually you got only 25 percent of interest 
sorry 25 rupees of interest rather than getting more than 40 rupees as interest because the actual the purchasing power of 115 is now equal to the earlier 100 rupees so it its savings suppose you have invested 100 rupees ideally it should become 140 but it has not become 140 but 140 minus 15 it means 125 is the in 125 rupees is the actual value that is also known as the real rate of interest we'll discuss later on next it is known as debt in case of debt also it eats that also how Suppose this is SBI and this is A. A gave 100 rupees to SBI in the form of FD. A in this case is known as creditor. SBI in this case is known as debtor. SBI in return gave a piece of paper that is known as FD on which it is written you gave me 100 rupees I will give you 1 not 1 1 10 rupees after 1 year but suppose all this thing happened in 2015 but suppose there is an inflation of 5% in the economy so in 2016 1 not 5 rupees of 2016 is equal to 100 rupees of 2015 because there is 5% inflation the purchasing power of rupee has decreased now earlier whatever you were able to buy in 100 rupees now you have to shell out 105 rupees so actually theoretically SBI returned 110 rupees in 2016 but because there is an inflation of 5% so actually SBI paid only 5% rather than paying an actual 10% SBI paid only 5%, the effective 5% only because the purchasing power has decreased. The purchasing power of 105 has become 100 equivalent. So, this is why we can say if there is inflation. Now, if the question comes, now the question. First treatment, inflation benefits the debtor. Inflation benefits the creditor. Third is both and fourth one is nota. You have five seconds. Inflation benefits the creditor. Inflation benefits the creditor. Both are none. So, the answer is inflation benefits the debtor. In this case, SBI is debtor. So, rather than paying 115 rupees, 115, why 115? Because 5% 5 inflation should be compensated plus 10% interest rate. So, SBI ideally should pay 115 rupees because the purchasing power of 105 is 100 rupees. Earlier, one, 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 whatever commodities you were able to buy in 100 rupees, now you have to spend 105. So, in this way, what we can say is inflation eats savings, we already discussed because that is what the loss of A and inflation eats the <coughs> debt also that is why in case of money we discussed <coughs> the functions of money first function was as a unit of measurement uh, the second one so as a measuring unit we discuss this is what the negative of the money is we have other we have other units also for example we have centimeter we have kilometer we have kg all these things are static it remains constant one kilometer today whatever the distance is one kilometer will remain same one kilometer maybe after five years or ten years but in case of money if 100 rupees is there maybe after 10 years this 100 rupees will equal to 140 rupees because the value of money decreases with time the purchasing power of money decreases with time that is why one of the negative of money as a unit of measurement so these are the basic concepts of inflation.